Hey everybody, in this tutorial you're going to learn how to take any character you want with any animations you want and use them as your player. You'll understand how an animation blueprint is put together and works which involves creating a state machine and also a blend space and swap out for the mannequin in the third person game template. So buckle your seatbelts and let's go. So part of the reason for this video is to understand exactly what's going on in this whole gameplay. So let's start at the very top. When I hit play, I have a character that I can run around. So why is this character showing up in my scene? What What's controlling this? So let's escape out of here and let's go up to our project settings. If you go to your project settings, go to maps and modes, you will see that there is a default game mode and that is set to BP third person game mode so this is what's at the very top making our first decision when you hit the play button what is your game mode so let's go look at BP third person game mode you can go ahead while you're in here you could just click this button it's gonna select it for you in the content browser then I can close this alright so down in your default third person template You'll have this folder in there, there's blueprints, and here is our BP third person game mode. So let's go one level deeper. Let's go ahead and see what's in this blueprint. Double click, it's gonna open. And here is a very important field we're gonna have to come back and set later. The BP third person character is the default pawn class. So when you run this particular blueprint, this game mode, this field here is telling it, use this character as your run around the world character or this this blueprint inside the blueprint you actually pick your character but this is telling what pawn or what character do you want to use when you're running around playing the game so this will be coming back here as well but it's important to, to understand this BP third person character so this is the blueprint for our character let's go ahead and close this that's actually right next to the game mode let's take a look in here so double click, open up your third person blueprint character. And there's a lot going on in here. We don't need to do too much in here at the moment, but one thing I want to show early is we have our three tabs here. If you go to the viewport tab, this is where you'll see the, uh, the pieces of the components here in their visual form and the capsule and the arrow pointing in the direction. And here's our mesh right here. So this field here is defining what character your run around the scene is using. And right here you'll see the skeletal mesh field. This is your Quinn sample. Let's just say, we're, we'll add our custom character in a moment, but it's important to understand this while we're right here. What if I want to use, uh, we already have the male mannequin as well, or uh, what's his name, Manny. So if I click on this and switch over to Manny, and now you see there's Manny. And if I hit compile, save, and close my blueprint for the moment, go back to my map and hit play. Now you'll see that is Manny instead of Quinn. Now that gave us a brief look at which mesh is being used, but let's go back into the third person character blueprint here to look at another field. If I come in here and select my mesh again, Again, this is, let's, let's switch back to Quinn just while we can. And this is yet another very important field here where it says animation here. So again, for the mesh that you're using in this blueprint, you will pick the mesh, but you also really need to know this field here, the animation that's gonna be used on that character. So here you'll see ABP, so that ABP stands for animation blueprint. So we'll get into that really deeply soon, but this defines what are the different animations on your character and how are they going to switch when you're running around the animation directions that are being used in this particular character. Now, so what does that mean, ABP, Animation Blueprint? That is determining, let me close this here for a second. Again, back to play mode. When I, right now, our character is just chilling right you can, there's a very subtle idle going on that is an animation loop when I hit W 
and I start running, that is another animation. When I hit spacebar, that's another animation. So how how all those blend together and work together, that is determined by the animation blueprint, and that's what we're going to spend quite a bit of time setting up for our own custom character. So let's go ahead and get into that. We'll go ahead and stop our gameplay at the moment. And if you go to your characters folder in the third person template, you'll see you'll have your mannequin and your mannequin. So this is the old UE4 mannequin, this is the new one. And I have already imported my mocap man. So let's talk about what I've imported here. So you could do this with any skeletal mesh that you want. I just happen to use a Mixamo character because he's easy to grab and free. So this is a this is the mocap man. He actually is named Passive Marker Man. And if you go ahead and download, uh, I have a video that goes a little bit more into how to do this, but very quickly, go to your T-pose of your character, hit download, and select the T-pose. Just hit download. So notice here in my browser, it downloaded this guy. I don't even need to go find it in the finder. Just as an example, let me uh, go to characters, make another blueprint, I'll call it mocap2. I'm not going to use this, it's just so y'all can see in case this is a little new for you. Um, I can grab it from here and just drag it in. So your Tipo's character, you want to go ahead, leave all of these set to the defaults. Double check, make sure you have a default. So leave everything as is and hit import. That brings in your Tipo's character. We're not worried about animation quite yet. That'll be the next step. Uh, you can ignore all this. Close that. So here is your passive marker man in T-Pose as your asset. Then I'm going to make another folder in here to store the animations. And for the animations, I'll just show you one really quick, but you can do this. Uh, if you need to do this, press pause and, and catch up. But So you would go to your animations tab. So think through what you're going to need for your character. You're going to need to find an idle, a walk, a run, and a jump at bare minimum. So just go shopping for what you want. For example, if you want an idol here, you would go through and find a nice idol that you want to use. And then I'll just do one here so you see the example. Uh, let's do this breathing one. He's <laughs> a little schlumpy there. So then you would download. Now this is an important thing here over the defaults. It'll say with skin. You don't need the skin. We already have the skin with the Tipos guy. So switch to without skin. We just want the animation information. If you need to change your frames per second, I'm just going to leave it at 30. Um, but you can do that here as well. Download. And when you download the animation, so here's Breathing Idle. And I'm going to drag that into here. And this is an important step. What you need to do is tell it which skeleton you want that animation to land on. So you want to go through here. And in my case, this is the guy I'm just importing, Passive Marker Man. The other one I renamed earlier, so passive marker man, and import, and then that will bring in that that animation for your character. You want to go get your other animations as well, and then come back and continue the video. But for now, I'm going to go back to characters, and I've got this folder already set up with what I want. So here's my downloaded mocap man, and here are the animations that I grabbed, just so you can see what they are. In my case. I have, turn this off for now, I have a happy idle, he's kind of chilling there, happy walk, and I got a run, this is a beautiful run, and I have, I'm not going to do kicking in this video, but uh, I'm going to do jumping in this video, so he's going to jump as well, okay? So I got all my animations ready, and let's get into the guts. We need to set up that animation blueprint to determine the logic of how is this character going to blend between those different animations. So you could kind of put it wherever you want, but I'm going to put it right here in this folder because it makes sense for me. I'm going to right click, go to animation, and choose animation blueprint. And the blueprint wants to know what character you're using. I want to use my mocap man skeleton and create. I'm going to go ahead and rename. I'm going to call this the uh, PMM passive marker man 
or mocap man, whatever you want to call yours. And this is the ABP animation blueprint. A lot of initials there, but ABP is the key. So double click and open that. So output pose, this node determines what your character's doing. And we have a bunch of different options we could use, right? In our animation browser, we have we have a walk, an idle, a run. So we have to figure out the logic of how to use which pose and when. So for that, we use a tool called a state machine. So what state is he in? So I'm gonna hit tab, type state, add a new state machine. And this ends up being a very hierarchical structure here. So not everything happens in this one spot. So we'll, we've got to dig in different areas here. So I'm going to drag this state machine. Again, this, this, this node is going to determine which animation is played when. And it feeds into the final output pose. So this is our final output pose at any time during gameplay. So for the moment, this is actually all we need here. We want to go into the state machine. Again, the state machine is just the thing that determines what state the character's in. I'm going to double click and go into it. And you'll see your path changes here. We now went into the state machine. If I click here to go back up to AnimGraph, that is this setting here that we just made. If you want, you can rename your state machine. I'm just going to kick off the word new because it is no longer new. I just made it. Right. So I'm going to double click and go into it. And here is the beginning of the logic flow. So I'm going to pull off of this and I'm going to add a state. A state really is just a what is he doing? So choose add a state and I'm going to name this idle slash walk slash run because this is a state that can be blended together. There's not really any logic between these other than the speed of the character, and that can all happen in one particular blend space, but we'll get into that. So uh, layer by layer here, let's just set this up. So we have a state of I'm either idle, walking, or running. Then you also have a state of jumping. So I'm going to click and drag off here, add another state, and I'm going to call that jump. And you'll see you get this little arrow here. What this arrow is, you can see it hopefully pop up there it says transition rule so this is how do you get from here to here so we'll come back and define that but when you go from idle walk run to a jump you eventually need to come back to idle walk run so I'm going to drag an arrow back down this way so this is actually the extent of the logic we need when you begin moving this character it's either idling walking or running or it's in the air and it's jumping so let's First go to this, we'll, we'll kind of work backwards here. So this state of jumping, what should it do when it's in this state? So double click to go into jump. And this is where you tell it what animation do you want jumping to be? So look, we're getting deep. Animation graph, state machine, down into the jump state. So this is where you actually lay the foundation of the animation. So just come over here, grab your jump and throw it in here. And this is the animation of your character jumping. And when you are in jump state, you want that animation to play. So your jump state is actually done. So we can hit compile and jump back up to state machine. Now you're going to get some errors because we haven't defined a way to get to the jump state yet. So that's what these little end to get out of it. So that's what these little arrows do. So let's now go ahead and do that. Double click this double arrow so you'll see it says can enter transition meaning if I jump up here it can go from here to here so what's going to determine if I can go from here to here well for jumping that means if you're in the air then you want to be in the jump animation so how do we know if we're in the air well for that let's head over to the event graph the event graph is what's happening during gameplay. So you, you want to get some feedback from the live gameplay action. So here we have a get pawn owner node. Let's, so let's pull out from here and we want to get the movement component. So just start typing get movement component. And our pawn is our character. So we want to get the movement of our character in this node. All right, so this is our pawn itself so getting this guy 
Now this node is getting the movement of that guy. It's nice there's a lot of these built-in functions. You just kind of need to know what they all are. So I'm helping you through that part. So pull off here and type is falling. We want to know is the character falling, meaning in the air. So it doesn't, I mean, because there's gravity, it'll make him fall. But if you jump up, if you push your space bar, that's also is falling, meaning it's he's in the air somewhere. So is this character, is the movement, is he falling? This is a little function that determines that. True or false is what we're looking at. And what we need for that is it to set a variable. So right click on return value and promote to variable. So this will make a setting for us when we do this. So we're gonna say promote to variable. And you can kind of call it whatever you want. I'll keep it consistent with the name of the function and I'll just say is falling. So what this does is we just created by right clicking here we created a new variable called is falling and then we are going to set it. Now you got to keep the uh, action flow going here so this is your you bring that all the way there. So that is making things execute. So this is running during gameplay, all the stuff, the event graph, what's the events of the game going on. And you're updating your animation here with this flag and setting your is falling variable based on is the character really falling or not. Okay, so that's one variable we need. Uh, and that one in particular is going to set the state is your character falling or not. Let's go ahead and see this in use. So we're going to go back up to our state machine, go into this transition rule. Again, we didn't do anything here before because we didn't have is falling there yet, right? But now we do. If you look over here in your variables, we now have this is falling variable and drag that variable in and get its value. So this is getting is the character falling or not. If the character is falling, we want to play the jump animation. So we want this to be true, and you can connect that to that. Okay, so if the character is falling, meaning if he's in the air, go ahead and transition into, I'm gonna go up here, transition into this jump state, which again, if I double click, is playing the jump animation. So let's go back up to the state machine. So that's how you get into the jump. Now you don't wanna just have him jump forever, you want him to eventually stop jumping when he lands on a surface. So go into the return transition rule. So double click this one. And you're setting the rule here. Now this is again, we're using is falling as our control variable. So get the value of it. But we want it. When does he stop falling? So for that we want to use uh, you can pull out from here and type not an OT and go to the top and you'll see there's a not boolean mean, it's just gonna return uh, a true or false. So is he falling? Not. Is he not falling? True means he's landed on the ground. So let's go ahead and connect that. So it means he's not falling anymore. So then back up to the state machine here. Once he's not falling, he can go back down into his idle walk run state. Let's, let's do a quick little review. Go back up to your animation graph. Your state machine, so actually if you hover you get that nice little pop-up so you can remember what it is. So your state machine, again, that is, if we double click it, that is the logic to determine switching between animations. The result of that, whatever state you're in, is going to play your character's output pose. Okay, again, we just need to go back in here for a little bit more work. Now we have to determine the, the idle walk and run animation. So I'm going to double click and go into this state. I'm going to close this so it's not flashing anymore. So here we have the output pose for idle walk run. Now that's three different cycles. When we were doing the jump, we just dragged in one and connected it. But we actually have three different cycles that we want to blend nicely between them all. So for that, we need to go into yet another asset type, but that's good because you're gonna totally understand how all this works. So for the moment, kind of mentally put a hold on what we're doing here. 
I'm going to drag and drop it here so that it stays open. I'm going to go back to our, our assets here. So here's our animation blueprint determining what animation plays when. We need another type of tool that will determine when am I idling, walking, or running. So for that, let's create, right click, go to animation, and choose this one here, blend space 1D, one dimension. So choose blend space 1D, that's the one we want to use in our case here. And again, it's for our mocap man. And let's call it BS for blend space. Again, naming convention is whatever works for you. And so blend space, mocap man. And double click and open that. So what this is responsible for, the blend space, is blending between your animations. So we start with our character in happy idle when this value is zero. So this value meaning uh, my speed. So we still have to set, set this up, but I have this parameter called speed now. You'll notice I'll look across the bottom here. This speed variable that we'll set up in a minute, we haven't done yet, will determine am I idling, am I walking, or am I running based on its values. So right now it just goes from zero to 100. So when my speed is zero, I want my character to be at idle. So I'm going to drag my idle animation and put it here. So that is what he does at speed zero. This value can change and we'll probably need to change it based on whatever your particular character is doing as far as speed goes. But for the moment, we'll just start with the defaults here and see what we get. So we're saying our character goes from uh, zero to 100. And let's say at 50 in the middle here, if the speed is 50, we want him to be doing his happy walk. So I drag happy walk to here. To be able to see what happens at 50 and the blending in between, you'll see right here it says hold control to set the preview point. So hold control and drag your mouse and that'll determine that's you're choosing like right there, it's like a playhead. Like right there I'm at zero, right here I'm at 50. And that is playing the animation at 50. If I go out to 100, nothing's going to change because I don't have any animation beyond that to blend to yet. But I will now when I go to the run and I drop the run at 100. So now if I hold control and go all the way out to 100, here he is at 100, here he is at 50, and here he is at speed zero. Okay, so, so this blend space, you're blending between your animations based on this speed value, which again, we still have to create and get from our character when he's running around in the game. So we're done here for the moment. Go ahead and hit save. And one one value to keep an eye on here is this max axis value, meaning you're, we set it to speed. So the 100 here is this 100 here. If I wanted to change that, I could type 200. But if I do that, that reset my scale out to 200, my animation points went, it's still at 50 and that's still at 100. So I'd, I would need to adjust here if I need to make changes, which I'm, I may need to, we'll come back here. But for now, I'll just put it back to 100. So save this and go ahead and leave it open. You know, dock it as well, because you may be making changes. All right, so now that we have this blend space, our blend space, it kind of counts as an animation asset. It's just a smart animation asset. I'm going to go back to my animation blueprint. And for my idle walk run state, I want the blend space to choose which one should be playing as my output post. So I'm going to drag my blend space into my state here. And I'm going to drag the output into here. Now you'll see it, it wants to know what what is the speed of my character. I don't have a variable set up yet, so let's do that next. Go to your event graph. Back here is where we determine if the character is falling, and this is also going to be where we determine what is the speed of our character moving around in our game. So get movement, uh, we use that, is it falling? But let's go ahead and pull off of our output here. And in this case, we want to know what is the velocity of our character. So 
how how fast is our character going? So we want to get the velocity. That got the velocity. Now the velocity is speed, but also direction. So we don't really need the direction for this. We just need to know the actual speed. So let's pull off of here and type length. We want to get the vector length, which is the speed. Okay. So when we have a vector length, we can right click here as our return value, promote it to a variable. And we're going to name that speed. And we need this to execute. So we're going to connect this to this as well. Okay, so how fast is the character going, which is a velocity which has a XYZ vector component, but then we want just the length of it. So that will determine the actual speed and we don't care what direction. And that is being pushed into this variable we just set up called speed, which we're going to use now back in our, uh, let's go over to our state machine, go into the idle walk run. I know it's open right there, but I'm just going the long way for you. Double click that to go in here. And here our blend space is set up here, but we need to tell it what is the speed so it can pick the speed for us. So you wanna grab your speed, drop it in here, and get its value. And connect that to your speed input. So now whatever your character speed is, it's gonna feed the blend space, and the blend space is gonna pick your animation between idle, walk, and run and that is going to go into your output pose for the idle walk run state. So back up to the state machine, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we've set up a majority of what we need to get this working. We have our idle walk run and we have a jump. We have the logic going to the jump and we have the logic coming back out of the jump. So this is if the character is falling or in air and this is if the character lands or is not in air, then it goes back and does this one. So let's go ahead for now for starters and see what happens. Let's compile and save. So that is our animation blueprint, which is now ready to roll. Let's go work our way back up what we looked at before. Let's go back all the way to the third person map here. Now we do want Thinking back to the beginning of the video, we, we do want, if we go into the blueprints and we had our third person game mode, remember what this determined? This determined what is the default pawn class. So third person character. Now what I'm gonna do is I may wanna switch between characters at one point or another. So I'm gonna make a copy of the third person character. I want one to stay stuck to the mannequins. I'm gonna make a duplicate of this and I'm gonna call it BP mocap man I'm gonna move this blueprint for the mocap man over into the mocap man folder and move it there and go over there now it's an exact copy so I gotta make some changes in here so I'm gonna go into my copy of the blueprint and select the mesh component and I want to use my mocap man so instead of using Quinn I want to use the mocap man skeletal mesh and super importantly, actually, I'll, I'll show you what happens if we don't complete what we need to do here. Uh, so I've currently just told it to use this mesh instead. And let's compile, save, and see what happens. I'm going to go hit the play button. And you'll say, hey, where's the mocap man? Didn't I just switch it? Yes, but don't forget there's a lot of things like I just did that are interrelated. What determines what character gets played here? Well, that is set by, back to the third person game mode. You do have to come back in here and switch that to BP mocap man. So this is your game mode. What player do you want to use? I want to use the mocap man blueprint for my game mode. So compile and save that. Now hit play again. And there's our guy. Now he's, if you play him, He's not really doing a whole bunch. That's because let's go. Let's go look at why. So he's almost ready. To, you'll be surprised. It's not that much more to do. If we go into our mocap man folder, open up that blueprint we made a copy of and select your mesh. So when we switch characters, it 
kicked us out of this anim class. So we need to tell it we want to use an anim blueprint. We made one, but we want to use it. So you got to click on here and go pick your, uh, we called it PMM, my passive marker man animation blueprint. I guess for naming conventions, if you want, you could call it ABP mocap man. Let's do that really quick. Let's just for ease, um, let's, I don't need this open anymore for now. So I'm going to close that. Go to my anims folder, which is where I left my animation blueprint. Hit F2. I'll rename it just to try and be consistent with the other ones. I'm going to call it mocap man instead of passive marker man as well. Um, so that's there. I'll leave it closed. I'll probably end up opening it soon to make some adjustments. But back to our blueprint for the mocap man. Back to this conversation here. Use animation blueprint. Which one to use? You want to use the animation blueprint for the mocap man. Now when you compile and save your character's blueprint and hit play. Here he is doing his idle. So he's working so far. So he's in idle state. His speed is zero. Therefore, he's playing the idle animation. So now I'm going to hit W. And he goes straight to run mode. So where did where did the walk go? So we're, we're almost done. We just got to do this is where we got to deal with the speed and the fine tuning of the speed. So he goes straight into run, which is cool looking but that's not really what I want unless I'm doing a sprint then I want him to go ahead and run but just by default I want him to be walking right now not running around like this so what's happening is remember our animation blueprint that's the let me just open it back up now the animation blueprint is determining here if he's not jumping it's determining whether he in, in the blend, blend space it's determining what he does. So when he's running, that must mean his speed is 100. So why is his speed 100? Well, if you go to the blueprint for your mocap man, again, all these things are kind of interwoven, a tangled mess, but that's why we're here to untangle it all. So in the blueprint for your mocap man, this is kind of determines the gameplay aspect. If I If we come in here, you know, you have your up and down, um, your trackpads or your, you know, your mouse and all, all the things that are going on. So this is kind of all the logic um, of your character that's in the event graph here. But if you select your character movement component, you'll see that there are a bunch of fields for your character. And if you look through here, you'll see there is one max walk speed. So when we hit the W on the keyboard, if you're using a keyboard. If you're using a game controller, you have a little more control over that, right? It depends on how much you push push your little um, thumb stick or joystick, whatever you call it. But here I'm using a keyboard. So when I hit W, it goes straight to 500. We know looking at our animation blueprint, for, for me, where to go my blend space, I want walk to be just 50. Well, that's a little off, it's 49, but whatever, I can shift that if I want 50 exactly so I want the speed to be 50 when I hit W on the keyboard so back to our mocap man blueprint then this value here of max walk speed I want to set that to be 50 and compile and save that and let's just go straight and hit play again so here's our character idling, and when I hit W, he starts walking. Now now he is playing the animation I want, but I think he's kind of going a little too slow as far as his transformation in X, X and Y, right? So this is where you kind of got to fine tune it based on what your character, if he was tiny, if he was a mouse, this might be perfect, but he's not a mouse, he's a, he's a person walking around here. So we need to go back and forth between our animation blueprint and our blueprint or our blend space and our blueprint. So let's do that. Let's try. I'm going to escape out of here. We'll go to our blueprint for mocap man, character movement, 
and rather than our walk speed max being 50 let's make it 150 now what that means is this is this is going to overshoot remember our blend space our blend space is set up to be 50 to be walking so we need this scale here to go out to 300 right because I want 150 in the middle so I'll say 300 and that didn't do anything here it, it made my scale go out to 300 but I still need to take my run drag that all the way to 300 take my walk and drag that to 150 if I want I get perfect I'll say 150 save that did we save our blueprint here um, again we set our max to 150 compile and save go back hit play now this time when we walk that's looking a lot more accurate for that particular animation right, so his feet aren't sliding as much he's, he's stuck there pretty good okay we're almost done we have him walking oh let's test the jump as well so uh, hit spacebar and he plays the jump loop right so he's playing around in there so that's working as well one final step to get the run kicked in so escape out of that so to determine if your character is running or not we're gonna go to our mocap man blueprint and we need to add a little bit of gameplay logic in here because similar to Fortnite, our sprint is going to be holding down the shift key, the left shift, and that will make us switch into the run mode. So in here, in your event graph of your character's blueprint, we want to hit the tab key and type left. And we want to grab a left shift input, so a keyboard event of left shift. And we'll zoom in here. So when you press left shift, you want your character's speed to be set to 300, right? Because we just saw in your blend space, when the speed is 300, that should trigger the run. So back to here. So left shift is gonna determine what our speed is gonna be. Speed of what? Speed of our character movement. So drag your character movement in here and go ahead and pull off your character movement and choose set max walk speed and you want when your left shift is pressed so when that triggers you want your max walk speed variable to be set to 300 when you stop pressing the left shift key you want you can either make a copy of this or you can pull out and do it again I'll just pull out and do it again so pull that out set max walk speed when you let go of the left shift you want them to go back to walking so come in here and max walk speed of 300 for the run when you're done sprinting and running you can go back to 150 now again, these values, remember they kind of tie together. If you go back and you change the speed of, we got we got three things working together here. We have our blueprint max walk speed in general that we set to 150, and then now we're overriding it at 300 here in the blueprint. Then we also have our blend space, which we had to set between zero and 300. So if you make changes to any of these speed values, you gotta kind of go back and chase them in the other places as well. So now what we can do is compile and save. And this logic here means when we press the left shift key while we're playing, it's going to bump the walk speed up to 300 and he should go into in the blend space. He should be over here. And when you let go of the left shift, it'll drop it back down to 150 and he'll be here. Then when you don't press W at all, he'll just be hanging out idle. Okay, so let's test all that hit play and start walking with W hopefully now okay so he's he is at his max walk speed currently is 150 so it's picking the walk animation if I while doing that hold down left shift 
he transitions into his run. So his speed now is 300, and therefore the blend space is choosing the run. And if I let go of left space, it goes back to just the walk. And then when I let go of W, he pops into his idle animation and then space bar puts him in his, his loop there for that. Now I think in this case I had to trim my jump cycle. So what I had to do there, just so you know this is possible as well, let me jump out of the game here and go into the jump animation for this particular character. Yours is totally going to depend on what animation cycle you do, but just so you know you can do this. If I come in here to the jump cycle, by default out of Mixumo it's a longer cycle, but I trimmed it by, let's say I want the cycle, it'll look terrible, but let's say I want the cycle to start here instead of on the ground. What you would do is you come here, you right click, and you say remove frames 0 to 10. So you're trimming your animation this way, and then you can do it on the other side as well. If you need to trim the back end, you can remove frames here. And then when you save, that is now your new animation. If you totally hose it, you may have to go get it again from uh, Mixamo to start over, or just do a bunch of undos, or make a copy of the cycle before you mess with it. You can do that as well. Actually looks like I got a little too aggressive on my uh, pruning off my jump before he really settled. So when he gets and lands, he's a little uh, not quite landed yet. Now the other option is one thing you could do. Let's double check our jump animation and hit play. His arms are almost settled enough. So he, he comes to a land. It's not bad. So why why does he seem to be hopping from here straight to my idle? So watch again if I hit play. Notice when he jumps, he's he hasn't finished his cycle by the time he gets to the ground because he's not in the air long enough. So two things you could do here. You could make him jump higher, which is totally possible. That's done in the blueprint for the character. So you go to character movement, the same place where we change the uh, max walk speed. There is also a jump velocity that we can set on our character. So you'll see this jump velocity set to 700. If I want to fine tune how high he jumps to match the animation, then you could adjust this value here. For example, and again, this might look kind of funny, uh, but let's go to 1500. He's going to jump so high. So let's go ahead and compile, save, see what that looks like. Hit play. And he's running along, and then boom, he's super high. Now, oh, now notice the problem about this is now he's he's multi-jumping, which if that's what you want, that's fine. But uh, that I'd say he's a little too high, and he's multi-jumping. So let's look at both of those things. The multi-jumping, that is set in the animation blueprint. And let's go into the state machine for the jump. And here was the cycle that we used for the jump. And if we look in the parameters here, we'll see loop animation. If you uncheck loop animation for the jump and save, and let's play again to test that. He's going to jump just once, but then again, he's like, oh, back to a stand. So he's, he's jumping a little bit too high, but just to note, that is one place where you can make a change is how high a character jumps. The other thing you could do to fine tune this is, let's go back and set that to uh, what it was before, which was 420. The other thing is he's not finishing his animation in time. So the other thing you could do is adjust your animation asset to be a little bit faster. This is just some random thing I got from Mixamo, right? So uh, who says it's playing fast enough or not? So if you go into here, you can adjust the rate scale looks like it already slowed this down before and then because uh, default is just a scale of one so i need him to actually speed up a little bit more right so maybe that 0.8 wasn't ideal so let's set it to one hit save and play let's see if he finishes his jump in time mm, it's better kind of don't think he's jumping high enough for that that move but anyway uh, we're not here so much for spending all day on aesthetics. Um, you know, maybe it was set to 750 before. I'll have to watch the video again and find out. Uh, let's go back to the uh, blueprint for Mocap Man, character movement, one more time. Uh, oh, it was 700, wasn't it? So that wasn't the default. Um, so now, 
then. Let's go. Grand finale. Here's our character. We're walking. Jumping. Uh, okay, so he, now he finishes a little too early, so I'd have to slow him down a little bit in his animation rate, which you saw where to do that. So again, for fine tuning, it's totally up to you to determine if you want your guy with such a nice jaunty walk and then a uh, awesome run there. So he's got a great run. Look out. All right. Hopefully that's enough to give you a thorough understanding of how all of this works in terms of animation blueprint, the blend space, where you have to make adjustments to your blueprints and how to fine tune your different cycles. So give it a try. Pick any character from Mixamo or any character you want and uh, make them do something cool.